Hello guys, Dr. Hasbullah here and in this video, we're going to be looking at a phenomena that is called a shock wave. Previously, we have learned about something that is called sound wave, right? So sound wave is basically a small amplitude disturbance, but shock wave is a large amplitude disturbance. So in the description section, I have listed a few videos that you can watch so that you know what shock wave looks like. There are a few types of shock wave, which is normal shock or oblique shock. But shock wave is considered quite an advanced subject in fluid mechanics. So for your course, I'm going to be introducing you to normal shock wave. Now shock wave is very thin. The thickness is just about 10 to the power of minus 4 millimeter. So we're going to consider what happens before and after the shock wave, a discontinuity of zero thickness, right? In shock wave, because it's a large amplitude disturbance, the discontinuity is quite big. What I mean by discontinuity is that imagine when you have a certain pressure. Now imagine that if you have a flow that's moving too fast, and that this pressure cannot catch up with the velocity, and that is when shock wave occur. The information contained in the pressure simply cannot travel fast enough and that includes pressure, temperature and density. Let's take a look at a normal shock wave inside a pipe or inside a tube, okay? When you have a tube and let's say this wave and let's say this wave is moving from right to left at velocity V1 and as usual, to make it easy to study the control volume, we're going to consider we're going to assume that this wave is constant, but the flow is coming from left to right. Okay, I'm going to draw it here. Okay, so now we have a shock wave that is not moving anywhere. And we're going to build the control volume around it. Okay, but what happens is that the flow will come from the left at velocity V1 and leave the shock wave at velocity V2 and the associated pressure is P1 and density is rho1, this is P2 and rho2. What we are interested now is the relationship before and after the shock wave. So let's say you want the relationship between P1 and P2, rho1 and rho2 and also V1 and V2 and how do we do that? So basically what happens is that M2 square equal to m1 square plus 5 divided by 7 m1 square minus 1 right that's the relationship between the Mach number and inlet and the Mach number and outlet and also you will have p2 over p1 equal to 7 m1 square minus 1 divided by 6 and t2 over t1 is m1 square plus 5 times 7 m1 square minus 1 divided by 36 m1 square. Now, if you are interested in deriving this equation, you can always go to your textbook and try to derive the equation. But since this is quite elementary, I'm just going to give you the final equations because later I'm going to show you the way to solve this without equation, which is using the table. This is a much simpler way, just like when you use the table to solve for isentropic flow before. So what does this equation tell us? So the first case scenario, M1 equal to 1 and M2 equal to 1. Let's take a look at what happens to the equation. Let's take a look at P2 over P1, right? If I write this in purple, so this is 7 times 1 minus 1 divided by 6, so this becomes 1. This means that P2 and P1 is exactly the same. It means that there is no discontinuity, meaning that the shock wave does not exist. Okay, let me erase this. Let's take a look at case number 2. For case number 2, if Mach number at inlet is greater than 1, which is the supersonic flow, and Mach number at exit is less than 1, which is subsonic flow. This means that the shock wave has converted the flow from supersonic to subsonic, right? And the final case is what if Mach number at 1 is less than 1, this is subsonic. And Mach number at exit is greater than 1, which is supersonic. 
And according to this condition, you could say that the shock wave is converting the flow from subsonic to supersonic when it gets past. However, due to the second law of thermodynamics, this condition is not possible. Okay? When you, if you do the math, you will find out that condition number 3 will result in entropy decrease. And as you know, entropy will never decrease, right? It will always increase. Now that we've seen the equations and a little bit of concept behind it, why don't we try and do a few examples, a few tutorials so that you know how to use these equations and also you know how to use the table. Okay, so question number one, okay. Let's say a normal shock wave goes through air at 16 degrees Celsius. Okay, so temperature is 16 degrees Celsius and the atmospheric pressure is 82 kilopascal. And this shock wave passed through at the velocity of 453 meter per second. Okay, by the looks of it, 453, it could be supersonic. Now the question asks for you to calculate the pressure and temperature downstream the shock wave. Now make sure you understand the equation, right? So the shock wave is going through air. Okay, let's say this is the shock wave. The air here is at 16 degrees Celsius and 82 kilopascal, right? Now when the shock wave moves through this air, right? It's going to change the pressure and temperature behind the shock wave because you know the shock wave is the discontinuity, right? So the pressure upstream and downstream the shock wave will be different. So now the question is asking to find the temperature and pressure behind the shock wave. And you can use two methods, okay? Method A is using the equation. And method B, you may guess it, is using the table. Okay, now let's try and use the equation first. Let's find our equation. And if you take a look at these equations, right, these three equations, you need to know the Mach number, right? So let's find the Mach number first. Let's draw, let's draw the figure, okay? So now let's assume the shock wave is not going anywhere. And you have here V1, 453 meter per second you have p1 82 kilopascal and you have t1 is 16 degrees celsius and your job now is to find p2 and t2 and how do you do it first of all you need to know the mach number and mach number is velocity divided by speed of sound right and we know that the velocity is 453 meter per second and speed of sound c is square root of k times r times t so this is square root of 1.4 times 287 times t is 16 plus 273 right and this gives you the mark number of 1.33 so you know that the shock wave is moving at supersonic speed and once you know the mark number i think you can find absolutely everything here okay that's the pressure and temperature let's find p2 over p1 okay so that is 7 m1 square minus 1 over 6 so p2 over p1 is 7 m1 square minus 1 over 6 this will be 7 1.33 square minus 1 over 6 okay and p2 is equal to so remember p1 is 82 kilopascal so this is p1 times 7 times 1.33 square minus 1 6 1.897 so this is 82 kilopascal times 82 this is 155.6 kilopascal and that is your pressure downstream the shock wave and what about t2 so t2 over t1 is equal to now this is your equation this is m1 square plus 5 7m1 square minus 1 divided by 36m1 square 
this becomes 1.33 square plus 5 this is 7 times 1.33 square minus 1 divide by 36 1.33 square and this is equal to Times, one point six, one point three, six, one point two, one. So T two is T one just now is sixteen degree Celsius. So this is sixteen plus two seven three times one point two one. This will be three four nine point seven Kelvin, right? So now you know that P two is 155.6 kilopascal and T2 is 346.7 Kelvin. If I draw the tube again, okay, and this is the shock wave, right? Remember that this is your control volume, right? And if I plot the diagram for pressure, okay, so this is pressure. And if you remember, pressure at 1 is 82 kilopascal. Right, 82 kilopascal, and once the shock wave goes through it, it becomes 155.6. Okay, so this is 155.6 kilopascal, and this is 82 kilopascal. Right, and this happens at a very thin surface, which is the shock wave. Okay, and similar things happen to temperature. If I have another axis here, which is the temperature okay the original temperature is about so 16 plus 273 289 okay so temperature is here let's say this is temperature 289 kelvin right and once it gets to the shock wave it will increase to 346.7 kelvin okay this is why this wave is called shock right because there are all sorts of discontinuity inside a very thin layer so that's basically the physical definition of shock wave now we have done part a let's take a look at how to solve using the table right and for the table of course you can find it at any fluid mechanics textbook at the appendix section or you can just google table for normal shock wave this is what the table looks like notice the title normal shock flow right and do not confuse with the previous table which is isentropic flow that we've done before also notice the title right for isentropic flow you have the mark number p over p t over t and a over a but for shock flow table you have m1 m2 p2 over p1 t2 over p1 po2 over po1 so do not confuse between these two table. Now let's get back to our question. We know that Mach number is equal to 1.33. Right? So M1 is 1.33. That's going to be between these two points. So what I will do is that I'm going to copy this. And paste it here. Now we are looking for P2 over P1. Okay, let's say P2 over P1 is X. Right, so it's gonna be here. It's gonna be between these two numbers, right? So our mark number is 1.33. So now, as you might expect, we're gonna interpolate. So 1.33 minus 1.32 divided by 1.34 minus 1.32 is equal to x minus 1.866 divided by 1.928 minus 1.866 and that gives me x equal to p2 over p1 equal to minus 1.8 1.897 Right, and we know that P1 is 82 kilopascal, so P2 is equal to 82 times 1.897. This becomes 
155.6 kilopascal and let's take a look at our previous answer 155.6 this is 155.6 so exactly similar right just like we did the isentropic flow table Finally, let's find T2 over T1 using the table. So that's going to be these two numbers. If I have here T2 over T1 equal to X, right? So I'm going to have 1.33 minus 1.32 divided by 1.34 minus 1.32 equal to X minus 1.204 over 1.216 minus 1.204. Right, and I will get x equal to one point two one. Right, so t two over t one equal to one point two one, and t one I think is sixteen degrees Celsius. Right, so t two is sixteen plus two seven three times one point two one. This is equal to 349.7 Kelvin Let's compare with our answer using the equations That is 346.7 I think I may have made a mistake here I think this has got to be 349.7 349.7 Okay So this is also 349.7 Okay, so there you go guys. It doesn't matter whether you use the equation or whether you use the table. The answer will always be similar. But to make things easy for you, because the equations is quite long if you want to memorize it. And if you want to derive it, it's also going to take some time. So what I suggest is that whenever you have a problem that involves normal shock, always use the table. As long as you know the Mach number before the shock wave then you will know what is the ratio between pressure 2 and pressure 1 and also t1 and t2 okay guys i think that's it for normal shock wave and remember that the shock wave is not similar as sound wave sound wave is a very little disturbance but shock wave is very huge amplitude disturbance so thank you guys for listening please do this video again and again in order to gain more understanding and also do some other examples please be sure to check in the description section i'm also going to link a few videos where you can see physically how shock wave is formed all right so that's going to help you with your understanding so please check out the description section okay thank you very much guys i'll talk to you soon bye